we had heard about the expectations uh we had heard about different rumors uh we had heard what these reporters said the ravens thought it was going to be uh but we had not seen anything official yet that's why i continued to tell people all throughout last night all throughout today because i know i talked to a lot of people said just wait wait till it's official because we hadn't heard anything official yet even last night when Ian Rappaport tweeted out something where he was like, oh, J.K. Dobbins, he's going to be out for weeks. And some people took that and they ran with it. I said, you don't do that. Don't do that because we just got to wait till something is official. Now, my hope was that, all right, it's a hyperextended knee and that's it. Not an ACL. From my point of view, it didn't look like an ACL, but some people thought it was an ACL. And, and now, just, just let's just read the official word on it from Adam Schefter. He said an M MRI today confirmed that Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins, one of the top young running backs in the game, suffered a season-ending torn ACL. And that's a uh that's a really really big blow for the Ravens. Um y'all y'all sit back, man, cuz we got we got quite a bit to talk about uh right now. Uh because J.K. Dobbins, he was going to be the feature back uh, for these Ravens, um, he was going to be their number one back, so to speak. And every time I talk about J.K. and Gus Edwards, uh, I always use 1A and 1B. Because J.K., yeah, he was going to technically be the starter, but you know Gus was going to get his fair share of carries as well. Um, but now this eliminates J.K. from the roster completely. Like, com completely. And this is what I hate, I, I, and I talk about it all the time. I just I hate when roster decisions are made based off of injury. Hate it with a passion, man, because it's it's the worst. Um, and with J.K. Dobbins now, him going to miss this year, just sucks for his career. Uh, sucks for the Ravens. Um, it's just it's, it's not a good feeling uh, at all for anybody involved, especially J.K. Dobbins, especially his family and whatnot. Um, it's, it's, it's just a huge blow. Um, but this, not, not to make light of the situation because it's not light at all, but this is a blow that the Ravens, they can actually withstand. Um, reason I say that, well, first, let, let's talk about the situation itself because I've been seeing there's been a lot of back and forth, a whole lot of back and forth about uh, should the Ravens have even been playing him in a preseason game? And then there was talk about teams playing starters in preseason games. Now, whatever side of the fence you on, that's fine. That's fine. Everybody got their own opinion on it. Me, like I said last night, I don't have a problem with starters playing in the preseason game, even though it was the last preseason game. This, again, was their last little ramp up before they actually get into the real thing. Remember, and not saying that it makes it right or anything like that, but week three of the preseason was usually where the starters usually play like a quarter, sometimes even a half, and then they will be off for week four, and then after week four, there will be the roster cut down, then boom, it's go time, it's regular season time. But now, since they eliminated that last preseason game, they only have three weeks of the preseason, and now they have a week break uh, in between, uh, and then after that, uh, you get to regular season. So this was the starters, their last little opportunity uh, to get some playing time. Me, I got no problem with it. I know I've seen some people say, I don't think starters should play in the preseason. That's fine. I've seen other people say, hey, it's not a big deal. If the starters, they only played a little bit in the preseason, so it's not a big deal. That's fine too. Whatever, Like I said, whatever side of the fence you're on, that's completely fine. But me, I, I don't have a problem with them playing in, in, the, uh, in the preseason. Um, because you you want to get them in sort of a rhythm. Now, one argument that could be used, and it would be a legitimate one too, you could say, well, but wait a minute. Look at last year. Last year, we didn't even have a preseason. And everybody did just fine. So even for that, if, if they were to eliminate the preseason, I wouldn't be mad at that. But then, see, this is why it's, it's so many different views on this thing. Because if you eliminate the preseason, then guys who, some guys, they make the team based off of preseason. There's some guys sometimes fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, undrafted rookie free agents. They make the team because of the preseason. Had there not been a preseason, a lot of guys, they, they'll be out of a job. 
They'll be out of a job because based off of draft status, uh, based off of their name, based off of all of that stuff, they would have never even been given the time to play. They would have never even been given the time to shine and show, hey, I can play in this league if it wasn't for preseason. So you see how this this argument on should starters play or not based off of the preseason or should there even be a preseason or not, it can go either way. That's why you just you, you got to respect everybody's opinion on it because everybody has some valid points. But when I look back, obviously, if we could go back and change it, we wouldn't have had J.K. out there. We wouldn't have played J.K. But. I, I, I don't like I saw some people even say, oh, man, you f hard, fire Harbaugh because of this fire him. Get him out of here because this is his fault that they played JK and JK's out now. Like, again, that, no, that's that's senseless. That's senseless. Um, so now the Ravens running back room is Gus Edwards. Uh, and he is the only one that's actually, or Justice Hill too, uh, but he's injured. I don't know the status of Justice Hill right now. Um, but Gus Edwards right now is the only healthy running back that's been on uh, an NFL active roster. Uh, the other options are Tyson Williams uh, and uh, Nate McCrary. So, um, Ravens. They have some decisions to make. Now, we know, we saw based off of last night that Tyson Williams, he's on the roster. He is on the roster. Whenever you do your 53-man roster predictions, whenever you you filling it out for the Ravens at, at BaltimoreRavens.com, just put Tyson Williams on the active roster because he's making it. And the reason we say that is because right, right after J.K. Dobbins' injury, Tyson Williams, he was nowhere to be found on the field. Ravens said, nope, not doing it. Come on, give it to McCrary and Mason, Eminem, let them handle it. They said, Williams, you are done. You are done for the night. Let's get you ready for regular season. That's it. So you got to figure that, yes, he will be on that regular season roster. Um, Gus Edwards, though. Now let's just move on to what we do have. Gus Edwards' role is going to increase. Is that a problem? No. Should the Ravens be able to trust Gus Edwards moving forward? Yes. Why? Because Gus Edwards has been in this situation already to where he's had to be relied upon a lot more. He did it his rookie year, did it the following year, did it the year after that. We know who Gus Edwards is. We know what Gus Edwards can do. We know what Gus Edwards is capable of. We know Gus Edwards' potential. And not even his potential. We know, like I said, we know what he can do already. So this whole thing ain't even based off of potential. We know exactly what Gus can do. And something else with Gus Edwards, he's been getting better in the passing game, too. And toward later on last season, they started getting him involved that much more. Now, Gus Edwards, when he first came into the league, he was this big bruising back. Big guy, had a decent amount of speed, but he was a big guy. He was a bruiser for sure. What did he do the following season? He shared some weight, and I was a little worried. I was like, he got faster, yeah, but is he still going to be able to be able to be that big bruising back? He still was. Following year, he shares even more weight. And I'm like, oh, man, is he still going to have that stiff arm? Is he still going to be able to run somebody over? He was, but he added more speed to his game. So Gus Edwards wanted to be a more complete back, more of a home run hitter. Because Gus would break off some big runs. He sure would. But a lot of those runs, he would get caught from behind after a little while. Um, and it would just be like, oh, man, if he was just a little bit faster. And Gus heard that. He heard it and he slimmed down and he got just a little bit faster. So I, even with the loss of a J.K. Dobbins, which is, is terrible, it's terrible. Um, the Ravens, they can withstand this blow. They, they, they can take it. They can absorb this loss. Um, another reason, Lamar Jackson. Heard of him before? I think so. Lamar Jackson he increases the value of any single running back that's back there playing with him. Any single one, whoever it is. Lamar Jackson increases their value by far. Why? Because teams have to look out, they have to account for, they have to watch for Lamar Jackson taking off himself. Because you know he can, and you know he will, unless it's the preseason. 
But we know what Lamar Jackson can do. Teams know what Lamar Jackson can do. So anybody, cause so so teams they have to watch him and they have to watch the running back every single play. Everyone that the world well, of win the running backs back then. So that helps out Gus. That helps out Tyson Williams, and that helps out whoever's going to be that third running back. Whoever's going to be. Now speaking of that third running back, who will that be? Because the Ravens have some options, and if you've been on Ravens Twitter today or any Ravens social media, you know it's been a lot of back and forth about the third running back position. Uh, some people are saying, hey, give it to Nate McCrary. And you can understand, hey, he's been doing his thing in the preseason, uh, and he's been, he's been a good runner, and his decision-making has been beautiful. It's been the best, man. Love it. Um, but then there have been some people like, hold up, wait a minute. Gus Edwards, okay, check. But then the, the Ravens' two backups would be two undrafted rookie free agent guys? I don't know about that one. That's what some other people say. Um, and then you have Justice Hill. But again, with Justice Hill, we don't know the status of Justice Hill. It's, it's really up in the air right now. But then you have the ones that want to dip into the free agent pool. Now, recently, of course, today, or actually not even today, but since last night, since the J.K. Dobbins injury news first came out, the name Todd Gurley just came up a lot. Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley. Came up a lot. Why? Ravens had him in for a visit about, what, a month and change ago. And nothing happened. Well, I didn't expect anything to happen back then. I just feel like, okay, they, they having him in for a visit. I didn't think they were going to sign him back then. Uh, but Todd Gurley, could he be a good option? Well, he would help in the pass catching game, certainly. But is he the type of back uh, that could fit in this Ravens offense? Now, Ravens offense, is it a, is it a plug and play? Because like we talked about, Lamar does add value to any running back that's back there. But is it just such a plug and play offense like that where you could just bring somebody off the street? All right, you're up. I don't think so. Because they have a very, as much as so many people get on Greg Roman. Now, I've gotten on Greg Roman before. You've gotten on Greg Roman before. A lot of people have gotten on Greg Roman before. But one thing that you have to respect about Greg Roman's game is that it's a very complex running game. It's a lot of moving pieces. You got motion. You got this guy moving here, this guy moving there. And the way that they design the run game is just, especially when it's working and when it's rolling, oh, it's such a beautiful thing. It is such a beautiful thing. We love it. And it's become Ravens, their number one option, the run game. But it, it, is, it is very, very detailed. Um, and it is very, very intricate. Uh, and it is very, very, again, complex. So a running back, we need, in this offense, my opinion, I think we, we need a north-south guy. We need a north-south guy. Anybody that's going to be dancing in the back, that's why with, with Le'Veon Bell, I love Le'Veon Bell. I, I I think he was a phenomenal running back, especially when he was in Pittsburgh with the Chiefs. I, oh, yeah. But anyway, he was a phenomenal running back with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the way that their offensive line was, he was able to be patient. Well, yeah, the way their offensive line was back then. Right now, so, uh, Najee Harris is going to be uh, Anyway, he was able to be patient. Le'Veon Bell, they snapped the ball, handed it off to him. He will wait, 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 look for a hole. Okay, I see it. I'm gone. With Ravens, their offensive line, their run style, running backs, they can't really be patient like that. Not Le'Veon Bell style patient. That's why I don't think he would be a good fit with this offense. Pass catching wise, yes, but running, I, I don't think so. Um, so you have to get somebody that could be a downhill runner, north-south runner, Um. And, and I, think, I, I think that's why with Justice Hill, he hasn't had all that success uh, in this offense. And not, not obviously not counting this year because he hasn't played, but even when he has played, he, he hasn't had too much success. Because uh, in my opinion, I don't think Justice Hill is really that north-south type of guy. But he, um, we'll, we'll see what happens with him. I, I'm, I'm still like... Before all this went down, I was thinking, okay, Justice Hill probably going to IR. And he still could probably go to IR if he really is hurt 
and they uh, depending on how they use that last running back spot. We know they value him on special teams. He has been a very good special teamer. He's somebody that can be a gunner. He's somebody that uh, makes tackles on special teams. Uh, he's also somebody that he could be a return if you need him to, too. So whenever the more you can do, especially on special teams, you know, hardball with special teams, with offense, you'd be like, okay, cool. With defense, you'd be like, okay, cool. With special teams, you'd be like, okay, cool. But so the more you can do for hardball, special teams, yeah, the, the, the safer you can be. Um, but with him, I don't think he's a, a, a north-south runner. Um, so that's the type of running back I think we would need. I've seen some people even mention Frank Gore, who is in his, what, 15th, 16th season? Um, but definitely a bruiser running back right there. Does he have the speed that he once did? No, no, of course not. Not after no 15 seasons. But is he somebody that's familiar with Greg Roman's system? Yeah, he is. He is. Would he be my first option? Well, he is from Miami, so got to have a little bias in there. Um, but he, he wouldn't be my first option. Who, who would be my first option? Honestly, my first option would be the role of who they got. And I know for some people that sounds crazy. Again, Gus Edwards and then uh, Tyson Williams and McCrary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would roll with what they got. Check it out week one. Try before you buy. Because, we, again, with, with contracts, anybody who you sign right now or anybody who you sign before week one, their contract for the entire season is guaranteed. But what if you have buyer's remorse? Because we've seen that happen with, with NFL teams. We've seen that happen with the Ravens. They had buyer's remorse with Earl Thomas. You know they did. They paid that man all that money. And I, I remember when he first signed him, I, it, it, it took a lot of the excitement away from me. Because I was like, I like Earl Thomas. I, I like the signing, but I don't like the money. I didn't like the money. That's the only thing about that signing I did not like. Gave him four years, what, 55 mil with like 33 or 35 mil guaranteed. And I was like, man, this dude just, he's coming off of two broken legs. And I just, I was worried about that. I'm like, you paying all that money to him? And the Ravens was like, no, we, we got to get him. Had to give him a deal he couldn't refuse. But then they had buyer's remorse. And then all these stories just somehow just start leaking out about, of course, he got into the fight with Chuck Clark. Of course, that, yeah, that fight made it a lot easier for them. But then all these stories start coming out. Oh, he's always late to practice. Oh, he's a bad teammate. Oh, he's always freelancing. Oh, he uh, rather get his car washed than, than be on time. And it was like, oh, no, y'all y'all just looking for a reason to cut him and a way to put it out there in the public to make it look like you didn't make a bad decision with paying him all that money in the first place. My opinion, though. Anyway, um, teams get buyer's remorse. So with buyer's remorse, uh, if you had that for a player that you signed, if you signed them after week one, then that contract wouldn't be guaranteed. Because anybody that gets signed after week one, their contract is not guaranteed. They are week to week. So if you cut them, that's it. You're done. So I would say, my opinion, I would say, you know what? Week one. Gus Edwards, let's go. Tyson Williams, let's go. Nate McCrary, let's go. Let's go. If Justice Hill is healthy, you got to think about that one. You got to think about that one. Um, if he can, can come back. But if not, okay, you, you roll with what you got. Because these guys are familiar with the system. They've been running it with Tyler Huntley and... They will be behind a better offensive line. Now, they would be in front of better defenders, too. But they will be in front of a better offensive line. You'd be running it with Lamar Jackson, so the threat would be that much more because Lamar Jackson would be right there next to you. So, again, I, I will say roll with the boys you got right now. And some people may be, whoa, but these guys are undrafted rookie free agents, man. Are you crazy? You're going to really roll with an un undrafted rookie free agents in a regular season? Like these games count now, Engraven. What are you talking about? Well, there's a guy. Um, there's this kicker. Different position. But there's this kicker. Ravens had just come off of losing in the AFC Championship game. AFC Championship? Like this is the game before the Super Bowl. Ravens had just come off of losing. And that was a heartbreaking loss. That, had, that was the saddest loss for me ever as a Ravens fan. Because you're so close. And you just knew, you knew if that game went into overtime, you knew the Ravens were going to win. But they lost. Billy Cundiff missed it. Missed the field goal. Go to overtime. So then the following offseason, 
Ravens bring back Billy Cundiff, who, who had signed an extension a couple years prior. Uh, and they, they also bring in this undrafted rookie free agent kicker from Texas. Some dude named Justin Tucker. I'm like, okay. So they show him in preseason and stuff, and you hear that, oh, this dude got a foot. He got a boot. He can kick that thing from like 60-something yards out with extra space. I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. So we saw him kick preseason and stuff. And I was thinking, oh. I was like, man, if... I said, let's, let's, let's roll with them. But no, nah, Ravens ain't going to do that. They're they, they not going to do that. They're going to play it safe. They know Billy Cunniff and whatnot. Billy Cunniff been in all these NFL situations and what. But Ravens said, nope. Undrafted rookie free agent kicker it is. And he continued to show his clutch from his rookie season till what? 11, 11 years later. 11 years later. So, and, and then somebody else in the same position who's still on the team. An undrafted rookie free agent back in what, 2018? Gus Edwards? Gus Edwards. Undrafted rookie free agent. Came through. His workload increased. And he showed his stuff. He did his thing. And the Ravens never looked back. They did draft the J.K. Dobbins. They still had him, added a Mark Ingram. But... Gus Edwards continued to show like, hey, I got it. And they continue to give him opportunities. <sighs> Mine and your favorite receiver, uh, Marlon Brown. Back in, I want to say 2013, I think that was his rookie year, 2013. Undrafted rookie free agent receiver from Georgia. 6'4 guy. And he does his thing in preseason. And Ravens like, okay, let's let's roll with it. Now they didn't get to go to the playoffs that year. They missed the playoffs by one game because uh, they lost against the Bengals in Week 17. Uh, but Marlon Brown, he uh, he did his thing for the Ravens, broke the Ravens' rookie touchdown record receptions. And now a couple years later, we never heard from him again. He went to the Broncos, some, and then uh, yeah, that that was it, pretty much. But my, my, my point when I say all that, and, and I know y'all can name more people, we can name more people, more undrafted rookie free agents that were given an opportunity, but that's my point. It's all about getting an opportunity. I, I, I do, trust me, I understand. Uh, oh, you, if you want to get a vet, because they have that knowledge, they got that experience. And that, but in this situation, as far as the running back position, I feel like you can roll with these young dudes, man. You could roll with them. We've seen rookie running backs come in the game, come in the league, and kill it. We've seen that plenty of times. It's the same situation. The only difference between these guys, Tyson Williams and Nate McCrary, and a lot of these other running backs that came in the league as rookies and killed it, the only difference is the draft status. That's it. That's it. Both were rookies. That's the only difference. A lot of the guys that came in and did their thing, they were drafted. Tyson Williams and McCrary, they weren't. But also, guess what? Something else to keep in mind, they wouldn't be starters. Now, they would get significant carries, especially Williams now. But they wouldn't even be the starters. But they still going to get, yeah, significant time playing. So, we're going to see how this whole thing uh, works itself out. Um, but shout out to J.K. Dobbins. It's... it's uh, it sucks. It sucks for J.K. Dobbins. Because um, we knew, like, th there would be, when, whenever people were asked the question, and I would always think, why is J.K. Dobbins the answer? Whenever they would be asked the question, oh, who, who do you think is going to be Ravens, um, their breakout player this year? Who do you think is going to break out for the Ravens this year? And I saw, I would see so many people say J.K. Dobbins. And I expected J.K. to go off this year. I expect them to get like maybe 12, 1,300 yards, something like that, maybe like 9, 10, 12 touchdowns, something like that. Get a nice little chunk of receiving yards too. But I just felt like it really wouldn't be him breaking out. I feel like it would be him continuing what he did last year. Now, had last year like he got like three, 400 yards and that was it, then I would be, okay, J.K. Dobbins breakout player. But last year he got like, what, like 900 yards? I think he had like nine touchdowns too. He had some like crazy high amount of touchdowns for just – that being under 1,000 yards and not even having been the starter. 
So I thought he already started breaking out last year. But now uh, we'll have to just wait and hope that he ends up being a comeback player of the year in 2022. But again, this is very, very bad news for J.K. Dobbins. Um, Very unfortunate for J.K. Dobbins. But again, this is a blow that's unfortunate, but it's a blow that the Ravens, they they can withstand uh, and they can absorb this one. Uh, So we'll see how they uh, handle it and uh, how they end up executing uh, moving forward. But like I said, if it was up to me, I'm rolling with Gus the Bus, Tyson, I'm going to call him Tyson Fury, and Nate the Great. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And just like J.K. Dobbins is for the entire season now, I'm out.